First at four, it's a deadly mystery on Detroit's east side. A woman is found beaten to death, and we're tracking the investigation. UAW workers face another week on strike. We'll take you through the process to decide if the tentative agreement will become a done deal. The weather has been up and down the past two days, but it looks like we're heading in the right direction for the weekend. We have your forecast. Hey, Nick. It's probably no surprise to see a group of sixth graders here at Beck Centennial. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, using computers in the computer lab, but what is surprising is the curriculum, how things have to change for today's digital age. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. A horrific discovery has led to a deadly mystery on Detroit's east side. We're told a woman in her 60s was found beaten to death on the floor of a vacant home on Meldrum Street near Gratiot. Police know who the woman is but are not releasing her name at this time. One neighbor tells Local 4 the neighborhood can be dangerous and you have to be careful. I feel safe because I protect myself. I, I took uh, necessary precautions to protect myself at the end of the day. So far, police have not shared any information about a suspect. We do have a crew working the story and we'll have a live update tonight at 5. Detroit police are also looking for clues after a deadly shooting also on the city's east side. We're told a man was found shot inside an SUV in the area of Remington and Conant, just north of Outer Drive. Police say someone passing through noticed that SUV in an empty lot. The man was taken to the hospital where he died of his injuries. We're working the story. We'll keep you posted as we learn more on the investigation. Step by step, the UAW is getting closer to ending a strike against General Motors, but we are not there yet. Right now, we're on day 33 of the work stoppage that started back in September. At 5 p.m. yesterday, the UAW leadership announced it is sending the tentative agreement to the membership for a vote. Tomorrow, the ratification process will start as the rank and file start considering the four-year deal. The vote is expected to be over by next Friday, October 25th. Stay with Local 4 and click on for any new developments. Troy police are telling us about a shoplifting suspect who made a really dumb mistake. Officers say 59-year-old David Kowalski approached Target Security saying he lost his key fob. When they reviewed store video to retrace the steps, they say he was seen stealing a shopping cart filled with merchandise. Officers responded to the store on Coolidge, located the suspect, and found more than $500 of stolen stuff in his car. Kowalski was given a citation for retail fraud. The sun's been shining. We're headed into a really nice fall weekend. Let's get over to Andrew Humphrey, who is in for Ben Bailey today. Andrew, this is encouraging. Karen, you're absolutely right. Soaking up the sun, feeling wonderful out there. Maybe grab a jacket. It's rather cool with temperatures that are in the low and middle 50s right now. 56 degrees out there over at Metro Airport. Nice and crisp for our friends over in Lapeer. Good afternoon to you. 53, 54 for our friends over in Port Huron. Yes, we got our friendly neighborhood spiders getting in on the action as well. Soaking up the sun this afternoon. 56 right now over at the airport. A nice gentle breeze out of the west southwest at around three miles per hour. Spiders a little camera shy. We're looking at good visibility all around. Some uh, high thin clouds overhead, but it remains mostly dry as we go through this evening. Not a drop of rain in sight. But what about the entire weekend? We'll talk about that and your marathon forecast in moments. It's been 24 hours of damage control and heated debate over what Mick Mulvaney admitted or did not admit on live television yesterday. The acting White House chief of staff says he did not confess the Ukrainian quid pro quo. Here's what part of that exchange said. So, so the demand for an investigation into the Democrats was part of the reason that he it was on to withhold funding to Ukraine. The, the look back to what happened in 2016 certainly was, was part of the thing that he was worried about in corruption with that nation. And that is absolutely appropriate. Devin Skillian in the newsroom tracking the fallout from all over Washington this afternoon. Devin. Yeah, still talking about it uh, about 24 hours later, Karen, more than 24 hours later. Uh, within hours of that news conference, Mulvaney was trying to walk back those comments, and he released a statement saying that there was no quid pro quo connected to the investigation of the 2016 election. Today in Washington, that debate playing out uh, pretty much along party lines. He was very candid and honest in front of the American public, and then he lived to regret it. So that's, that's what happened. It, there's no take backs on criminal confessions. I think Mick Mulvaney clarified his statement to be very clear. I take, I take Mick Mulvaney at his word for clarification. 
Meantime, President Trump continued to stand by Mulvaney today, saying Mulvaney clarified his remarks and that the president uh, continues to deny any wrongdoing. The outgoing energy secretary, by the way, Rick Perry, says he did not see a problem uh, going to the president's personal attorney for matters involving Ukraine. Perry also didn't say if he would respond, though, to a subpoena from Congress for documents in the impeachment investigation. The deadline for that is today. Now, in the past few minutes, President Trump just named Perry's deputy, Dan Brulette, to be the nominee to replace Perry. Perry is supposed to be gone as energy secretary by the end of the year. So we'll keep tracking new developments from Washington. Uh, updates coming up here at 5 and then, of course, on, at 6.30 on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Devin. There are conflicting reports on whether a Turkish ceasefire is actually taking hold in northern Syria. NBC reports gunfire and explosions were heard along the border. But Turkey's president calls it minor sniper fire that he says has been eliminated. Other world leaders not impressed by the deal between Turkey and the U.S. European Union says it's basically just asking the Kurds to give up and give in. Of course, we will keep you posted. Remember, ceasefire is only supposed to last five days. First at four, we're also keeping an eye on another hot spot around the world today. At least eight people were killed in Mexico during a shootout between police and heavily armed drug cartel members. Federal police attempted to bring in one of the sons of jailed drug kingpin El Chapo. After forces entered the home, they were surrounded by gunmen and were forced to release El Chapo's son. The shootout lasted for hours as terrifying civilians took cover. During that time, several prisoners also escaped from nearby prisons. And there are new protests in Hong Kong today, and they are expected to continue into the weekend despite a ban from police. Thousands of people are taking to the streets wearing face masks, also violating a government ban. The protests follow an attack on a protest organizer who was beaten with a hammer. All of this is part of a push for greater democracy in Hong Kong, which is controlled by China. Closer to home here, the Internet, changing the world our children live in for better and for worse. And that means local schools are adapting to the new reality with new lessons to keep your kids safe. Local 4's Nick Monticelli shows us those lessons are starting at a younger and younger age. Sometimes it isn't just one piece of private information that people know about you that makes it a bad thing. It's when those pieces of private information start to stack up. Inside the media center at Beck Centennial Elementary, teacher Corey Widener has had to change what he teaches based on technology changes. It, it creeps in everywhere. Technology is just, you know, we've got students using iPads, we've got students using laptops, we've got phones that now are kids that are in third or fourth grade have a telephone. Those changes, though, also mean how much younger the students are being taught. Stand up if you've ever posted on YouTube before. Posted. Posted a comment on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. All right. A little more than half of the students. Okay, go ahead and sit down. And stand up if you've ever shared something about yourself online. This is a fifth grade class, 10 year olds, discussing what's appropriate to post online. The really bad stuff like sexting and bomb threats don't come up, but things like cyberbullying do. And Addison Daniels and Dennis Harape are paying close attention. Like you think that's just a joke, but they might not feel that way. You could lose a friend doing that. They don't want to change the action of meanness. Yeah. That really bad stuff, though, will likely eventually happen. That's why Utica Community Schools has the Digital Citizens Program teaching digital footprints, privacy, and right from wrong as early as possible. We're those first bricks in the road, so to speak. So we know that when they get to junior high, these things are happening. We know as they go to the high school that they can happen if they're not careful and if they don't take the time. All right, so the goal is to build those building blocks, the foundations to set them up for success, but it's also to open the conversation because we know a lot of things apply even more when they go home. In like a game, for example, then and then you tell someone, someone says, I have candy for you, do you want to meet me here? If you go there, then you should, we like learn like not to trust people if you don't know them. Digital building blocks, so to speak, hoping to ensure a positive digital future. In Shelby Township, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, thank you, Nick. And Utica Community Schools also has a website with advice for parents to help teach kids online safety at home. We also have a link on our website. I click on Detroit.com.
Still ahead, first and four, we have been tracking safety concerns about baby sleepers. Well, today there is a new proposal that could lead to a big change for parents. Also, have you heard about the pop diva who took a tumble off the stage in Las Vegas? The story behind this viral video in Trending Stories. A first, it couldn't happen in March. Today, this finally happened. It's space history. We'll talk about the next barrier NASA is hoping to break. My birth certificate says Detroit. I love this city. There's so much diversity and culture. It is so amazing to see what a love for the city can do.